Hey everybody, it's Dave Murray, the big guy at Maniacs Branding, and today I want to talk to all you gutsy entrepreneurs about logos. Because hey, let's face it, when people think branding, they think logos. As incorrect as that may be. Huh. So, let's talk to you about how we figure out what to do for our clients' logos first. There's a company called Interbrand that does a study on the top 100 brands every year. So I'll put a link to the 2016 study in the description below. But what we do is we find that study and we just figure out the colors of those 100 logos. And we break it down. And this year, the study was pretty similar to the last several years. We found that 34% of the logos used red or red and white or blue or blue and white as their logo colors. And another 24% used black or black and white, or, you know, like an inverse kind of deal where on black background it'll be white, on a white background it'll be black, that kind of thing. Um, so usually black and white is used for brands that are premier brands. You know, things like Prada or Apple or things along those lines. These are, these are kind of the elevated brands, that's what they use. Um, the others are used for all kinds of good stuff. So it makes us kind of happy. Um, so that's why a lot of times we say you want red or blue or red and white or blue and white because, hey, that's what a lot of those companies are doing. And beyond that, there's also color biology. I don't like to think of color psychology when I'm playing with logos because things mean way too many things, right? So the color red, for instance, can mean love or lust, depending on what website you look at, I suppose. It can mean ambition, determination. It can mean hate. It can mean anger. It can mean frustration. In China, it means good luck. In India, it means purity. I mean, there's way too many things that a color can mean for you to really take it seriously when it comes to designing a logo. Now, these colors are important in other aspects of the brand, no doubt. But I don't necessarily see color psychology as being a big influence when you're talking logo. And here's why. Because everybody sees all those different definitions, you never nail it exactly, right? So I might see red and think love, for instance, right? Or anger or crazy, whatever. Somebody else might see it and see hate. And, you know, it's just it just depends on how those people's brains work, how the individual's brains work. However color biology I'm a big fan of. So the color red always pops forward and the color blue always pushes back. So when it comes to that, that's another reason why I think red or blue, red or blue, those are big deal colors, right? Because in branding, let's face it, right now with the over-communicated society, you have to do what you can to stand out immediately and right away. And if somebody's using a green logo or a yellow logo or something and they've got a little flyer on a table, but you've used a bright red logo or a blue logo, chances are they're going to notice those first just because of the way that our eyes work. Um, so that's a big reason that we talk like we do. Also, gradients. I hate gradients. Uh, logos are basically the same thing that you do for logos with brand strategy since they are kind of a part of brand strategy, design is, uh, you want to make them as simple as possible. And when there's a gradient in a logo, it loses a lot of that simplicity. Now, there were, I believe, 18, maybe 16. A lot, of, a lot of logos in that inner brand study did use gradients, but they're all brands that we've heard of. You know, Ford uses a gradient, GM uses a gradient, things like that. Um, so look out for that. Do not think of yourself as the exception to the rule. I hope you are in many areas, but there are times that you have to just sit back and say, okay, I hate the colors red or I hate the color blue, but I know that I need to use those because that'll help my brand get noticed a little better. Vanessa hates red. I like red, of course, I'm okay with it, but she can't stand it. But she understood through the studying that we did that Okay, I, I guess we need to use red. Um, another thing that you do so you can figure out what color to use is you study your competitors. Maybe all your competitors are using blue, now you're going to use red. Or all your competitors are using red, now you're going to use blue. Now, there are times that you do need to have an exception to the rule. 
Um, maybe everybody is a combination of red and blue, red and blue, red and blue, or whatever, right? And you have to say, okay, okay, they're already there. It's already a saturated market. Let's insert some yellow in there. Or you can also gamble a little bit and say, you know what? It is a saturated market, but these people don't know what they're doing. I'm going to try inserting a red or blue in there and go for it. Uh, if it's not a saturated market, you have a little more freedom to play with different colors. But the next thing you know, somebody else will come in and use one of those top colors and have a bigger marketing budget than you. And that's it. You're done. Because they came in with something that gets noticed easier by people. Remember, this is all about getting noticed. Your logo, if you're an entrepreneur who's doing things for a cause, needs to be about getting noticed by other people, by your potential clients. It's not about you. It just can't be about you. We talk to a lot of people who are very passionate about their logos, and I don't get it. And the reason I don't get it is because, you know, they're not doing great. They're not an awesome brand. They're not something that everybody in their local area has heard of or that, you know, everybody in their profession's heard of. So let's switch it up. Obviously, what you're doing right now isn't working. So let's try and help you out any way we can. But people are really passionate about it. They don't want to change it. And I do get that. I mean, when Vanessa and I started, we were Good Stuff Studios, and it was hard to let that logo go. But we understood that because we live in Ann Arbor, everybody's going to try maize and blue, so we can't be doing that. Also, because we're in Ann Arbor, red is a good color because nobody here is going to use that because of the rival. Don't worry, we don't put red against gray for all you Michigan fans and all us Ohio State, you know, haters. Anyway, so that's a lot of how we decide what goes into a brand or a logo when it comes to color. Sorry about that. I had something gathering in my throat. That was very strange. Maybe it's a bug. Ugh. So there's that. Now, another thing you want to study is you want to look at your competitors to see what shape they're using. Maybe a lot of them are rectangular. Go circular. You know, you're, you're just differentiating yourself. Maybe they're pretty serious. Go a little goofy. You know, it's all about just going in there and making sure you stand out. You've got to stand out or you're not going to get noticed. You're going to get lost in the shuffle and you're going to make me sad. And then you're going to call me and say, Dave, help us with your brand. And I'll say, change your logo. And you'll say no. And then I'll just leave with both of us having wasted our time. So that's it, guys. Have fun. Enjoy your Maniacs Monday. Sit down, really look at your logos and make sure they're serving you. And of course, stay gutsy, gang.